This training session will cover scheduling in Therapy Notes. If you're new to Therapy Notes, we recommend watching our Getting Started training session first to prevent any confusion. To follow along in Therapy Notes, please make sure you have the Practice Scheduler role. Most of what you're going to do only requires the Practice Scheduler role, but we'll let you know when additional roles are required. Scheduling your appointments in Therapy Notes is the first step to using our integrated workflow. Scheduling accurate appointments will make writing notes and billing easier. There are several ways to schedule an appointment in Therapy Notes, but the most common method is to go through the Scheduling tab at the top of the page. On the right, you'll see the Calendar View tabs, which let you decide how you would like to see your schedule. Right now, you're on the Agenda view, but you can change the view to Day, Week, or Month. What you're looking at now is the calendar. To the left, you can use the Jump option to quickly navigate through past and future appointments. If you're the only clinician on the account or are logged in as a clinician without the scheduler role, you'll only see your own appointments, which will be color-coded by appointment type. While on this screen, you may also choose to hide missed and canceled appointments, only show patient initials and calendars, and which locations you can see. Once you've made your selections, click Set Calendar View. Now that you have the calendar set to how you want it, you can begin making appointments. To add an appointment to your calendar, click Create New Appointment in the upper right corner, or click the small plus sign button in the upper right corner of a date. The first field you'll need to complete when creating an appointment is the Type field. What you select for this field will determine which clinicians will be able to be scheduled for the appointment, which note template will be available to the clinician at the time of the appointment, and which service codes can be used with the appointment. To demonstrate this, we're going to jump down to the service code field. You can see that while the appointment type is therapy intake, we have certain service codes available. But if we switch the appointment type to therapy session, the codes are now different. The appointment types also include appointments that do not involve patients. This includes scheduled events, which can be used for staff meetings, and vacation or blackout periods, which can be used for meal breaks and vacations. Next, we're going to select the patient, clinician, location, service code, scheduled time, and duration. If you would like an appointment to appear on a regular basis, you can use the Frequency field to make a reoccurring appointment. This applies for both clinical and non-clinical appointments. Below the Frequency, you'll see the Appointment Alert field. The Appointment Alert field allows you to add additional information to an appointment for easy reference. Once you're satisfied with the information in the appointment, you can add it to your schedule by clicking Create Appointment. Now that your appointment has been saved, you can read the text of an appointment alert by hovering your cursor over the appointment. As you continue running your practice, you may find yourself having to cancel an appointment, mark an appointment as missed, or delete an appointment entirely. To do any of this, start by clicking the appointment from the scheduling page. Canceling an appointment should be done when an appointment was scheduled correctly, but the patient contacted you beforehand to say that they wouldn't be coming. To cancel an appointment, click Cancel Appointment. If you'd like to do so, you may also charge the patient for canceling by clicking Charge Fee, checking Charge a Fee for this missed appointment, entering the fee charged, and then clicking Save Changes. If you'd like to charge a fee, please make sure you have the Practice Biller role. To undo canceling an appointment, click Reinstate Appointment. If a patient doesn't appear for an appointment without prior notice, that's a missed appointment. To mark an appointment as missed, click the appointment, then click Appointment Missed. Just like with a canceled appointment, you can charge a fee for a missed appointment and can undo marking the appointment as missed by clicking Appointment Not Missed. If you'd like to document more details about the appointment, click Create Note, then fill out the relevant information. You can also choose to charge a fee while completing this note if you haven't done so already. 
Now, if you've incorrectly added the appointment and want to remove it from the schedule completely, click the appointment, then cancel the appointment as you did earlier. Once the appointment is canceled, you can delete the appointment by clicking Delete, then confirm by clicking the Delete Appointment button. Keep in mind that if a clinical note has been written for an appointment, you won't be able to cancel the appointment, delete the appointment, or mark the appointment as missed. Before we continue with this training session, we'd like to remind you that if you have any questions, you can find additional resources by going to the user icon and clicking Help. This will bring you to our Help Center, which contains numerous articles and videos explaining how to use therapy notes. If you'd prefer one-on-one -on -one assistance, you can give our support line a call or send us an email. As always, our support is unlimited and no additional cost. All right, now let's go more in depth on what service codes are and how to add them. First, make sure you have the practice administrator, clinical administrator, or practice biller role. Then go to the user icon, settings, and service codes. Service codes reflect the services you perform and are used for billing to insurance. On the service code page, you'll see all of your service codes listed by service type. As mentioned earlier, service codes can only be used with their corresponding service type. And this page is a great reference point if you're trying to use a service code but are not finding it when you go to make an appointment. If you're not seeing a service code you'd like to use, you can add it to your account by clicking Add Service Code. When creating a service code, first make sure you're selecting the correct service type for the code you meant to use. So, if you're entering a service code for use during a therapy session, you'll select the therapy session service type. In addition, consider that not all service codes are available for all clinical users. For example, if you create a service code using the service type psychiatry session, the code will only be available for clinicians involved in medication management. Okay, now let's enter a service code in the service code field using the code 90832, which is for 30 minutes of psychotherapy. Next to the service code field, you'll see a checkbox labeled, this is an add-on code. This box should only be checked if this code will only be used as a supplement to an existing code. We're going to leave this box unchecked since we're using this code as a primary service code for appointments. In the description box, Type what this service code can be used to bill for. The description can be whatever you want, as long as the description you're entering is not exactly the same as another service code description. For this example, type in psychotherapy 30 minutes. If your service code is typically used for appointments over a similar length, you can enter a default appointment duration. Since the code we're entering is for 30 minutes of psychotherapy, we're going to set the default appointment duration to 30 minutes. Whenever you make an appointment with this service code, the length of the appointment will automatically be set to 30 minutes. Under Time Units, you'll select how you would like this service code to be billed. If you'll always be billing for one unit of this service code, select the first option. If you'll be billing for multiple units of this service code based on the length of an appointment, Select the second option and enter how often you would like this code billed during a single session. If you want this code to be the default code for when you make appointments with this service type, check the box in this section. Be aware that if you're using the client portal for scheduling, the default service code you select will determine the appointments available. In this example, selecting a code with a 30-minute default appointment duration will show a 30-minute appointment block when a patient is selecting a therapy session. Next, take a look at the standard rate field. The standard rate should be the amount that you charge for this service if the patient is paying direct and is not in financial distress. But for now, we'll just list 50 as the standard rate. Finally, if you'd like to have specific modifiers included whenever you build this code, you may enter up to four of them in the boxes next to default modifiers. Once you have looked over the code and everything is as you want it, you may add the code into your system by clicking Add Service Code. If you go back to the Service Code page, you can see the code you just added within your list. 
If you'd like to edit a service code, click on the service code, adjust the sections you need, then click Save Changes. Please note that changing the service code's information will not affect any notes that have already been written. The same applies if you delete a service code by clicking Delete in the lower right corner. Now that we've reviewed the service codes, let's take a look at a few additional scheduling features. If you have the client portal enabled in Therapy Notes, you can allow patients to request appointments directly through the portal. If the patient makes such a request, you'll see a new item on your to-do list. The requested appointment will also appear on your calendar, but with diagonal stripes going through the appointment. When you click on the appointment, you'll see an additional set of options. To add this appointment to your calendar, you'll need to select the patient this appointment is for. If the patient was logged into their portal account while requesting the appointment, they will automatically be selected. For patients that don't have a portal account, you'll either need to match them to an existing patient or click Create New Patient and add them into your account. After the patient is selected or created, you may confirm the appointment by clicking Create Appointment. Following this, the patient will receive an email confirming that the appointment has been accepted, as well as the time and location. If you would like to decline the appointment, click Decline Request. If an appointment is declined, the patient does not automatically receive a notification. You'll want to contact the patient using their provided contact information and explain why the appointment was declined and make other arrangements. If you've declined an appointment request by mistake, you can undo the decline by clicking Undo Declining Request. If you'd like to review your appointment requests, go to the Scheduling tab, then click Appointment Requests in the lower right corner. From this screen, you can see your appointment requests and get more information by clicking on them. If you're not seeing the request you're looking for, go to Advanced Search, then adjust the parameters until you find the request that you're looking for. Next, we're going to talk about appointment reminders. Enabling appointment reminders is one of the easiest and most cost-effective things that you can do to reduce the no-show rate in your practice. To enable appointment reminders, go to the user icon, click Settings, and click Patient Appointment Reminders. If unchecked, first check the box next to Enable Patient Appointment Reminders. Scrolling down, you'll select the type of reminders you would like for the default patient settings. Once you choose an option, that will be the type of reminders sent to patients, unless the setting is changed under a Patient's Patient Information tab. While Therapy Notes generally recommends enabling appointment reminders, we also recommend having the default patient setting as no reminders unless enabled on an individual patient's Patient Info tab. This way, a patient won't accidentally be contacted without authorization. Under Email Reminder Settings, you can select where you would like replies to appointment reminder emails sent. Please note that this email needs to be the email of a staff member with the practice scheduler role. In addition, you can choose to address patients by their preferred name instead of their legal first name by checking the corresponding box. When you're using voice reminders, the way your practice name is spoken may not match how it should be pronounced. You can check how the practice name will be pronounced in a voice reminder by clicking Send Test Phone Reminder, entering your phone number, then clicking Make Test Phone Call. If the name isn't pronounced as you want it, enter the name phonetically in the Spoken Practice Name field, send another reminder to yourself, then repeat the process as required. If you'd like to see how your email and SMS text reminders will look like, Click the corresponding buttons in the lower right corner, then follow the instructions. Once your appointment reminder settings are as you want them, click Save Settings. So now that you know how to set up your schedule, you'll probably want it easily accessible for when you're not at your computer. Fortunately, Therapy Notes is cloud-based, so if you want to access Therapy Notes on your phone, you can open your mobile browser, then log in like you would on your computer. However, if you'd rather look at your schedule on your favorite calendar platform, 
you can sync your Therapy Notes calendar to an external calendar. To do this from the scheduling page, go to Sync in the lower right corner. Alternatively, you may go to the user icon, click Settings, then click Sync Calendars with Other Applications. If you haven't done so already, click Enable Synchronization with Other Programs. The instructions for syncing your calendar are going to be different depending on which platform you're using, so you'll need to find and follow the correct set of instructions on this page. If you're a practice scheduler, you'll be able to sync the entire practice schedule, while individual clinicians can only sync their own schedule. These links should be kept secure, and if you feel someone may have gained access to them, you can disable or change them. Once the calendar has been synced, patient names will appear as patient initials, which protects their privacy. Please note that for your security, this feature only allows a one-way sync from therapy notes to the external device or program. That concludes our scheduling training session. Our next video is on notes and documents, so make sure to watch it after this. If you need additional support, check out our Help Center to access our library of articles and videos. If you prefer one-on-one -on -one assistance, our support team is available at no additional cost. To try Therapy Notes for yourself, visit therapynotes.com and sign up for a free 30-day trial. Thanks for watching.